It was the year 1822, and in the city of Charleston, South Carolina, a storm was brewing. The town was built on the backs of enslaved Africans who toiled day and night to support the lavish lifestyle of their white enslavers. But among the enslaved was a free man who dared to challenge the system. His name was Denmark Vesey. Hey folks, I'm Professor Darius. Thank you for watching African Elements. In this video, we'll explore the history of the 1822 rebellion and its impact on the free and enslaved Africans in Charleston, South Carolina. The Denmark Vesey Uprising of 1822 is an essential chapter in the struggle for freedom and equality in the United States. The rebellion was set to take place on the hot summer night of July 14, 1822. The city was on edge and the white authorities were on high alert, but the rebellion never came to pass. It was uncovered before it can begin, and the leaders were arrested and put on trial. 35 were executed. But the Denmark Vesey Revolt was not just a failed rebellion. It was a call to action, a call for freedom and equality. It was a spark that would ignite the fire of abolitionist movement and the struggle for civil rights that would continue for decades to come. Who was Denmark Vesey? Born into slavery in the Danish West Indies, Denmark Vesey purchased his freedom in 1799 after winning a lottery prize. But his freedom was not enough. Every day he saw the injustices and oppression his enslaved brothers and sisters faced, including his wife and children who remained in bondage. He became a leader in the city's African American community and used his position to rally the enslaved people of Charleston. Using the African Methodist Episcopal Church as a platform to organize and recruit, he called for a rebellion that would overthrow the institution of slavery and bring freedom and equality to all. Vesey was profoundly religious, and his faith played a significant role in his motivation to revolt. He believed that slavery was a moral evil and that it was his duty to fight against it. He also believed that God would aid the rebellion's success and that the enslaved people could gain freedom with divine help. The African Methodist Episcopal Church, or AME Church, and spirituality in general were essential ingredients in the revolt. Free and enslaved African Americans in the early 19th century established the AME Church, which provided a space behind closed doors for African Americans to come together, worship, and organize. The AME Church was also a symbol of resistance against the oppression of slavery and white supremacy. It represented the enslaved people's desire for freedom, equality, and self-determination. Denmark Vesey was a member of the AME Church and used it as a platform to organize and recruit the enslaved people to join the rebellion. Many enslaved people who joined were also members of the AME Church and used it as a meeting place to plan the uprising and discuss strategies. In addition to the church, Gullah Jack, also known as Jack Pritchard, was a crucial figure in the planning and execution of the slave revolt. An enslaved African man and skilled blacksmith, Gullah Jack was also a religious leader in the African American community of Charleston. He was a close associate of Denmark Vesey and played a significant role in the planning and recruitment of the enslaved people to join the rebellion. Gullah Jack was known for his ability to speak the Gullah language, a Creole language spoken by enslaved Africans in the coastal area of South Carolina and Georgia. He was also known for his religious fervor and his ability to recruit enslaved people to join the rebellion by appealing to their religious beliefs. The rebellion was planned to take place on July 14, 1822, and it involved hundreds of enslaved people in the Charleston area. However, the rebellion was discovered before it could take place. The aftermath was severe, and the white community in Charleston responded with repression and violence against the African American community. Ultimately, the courts tried and convicted 67 conspirators for their role in the rebellion. Vesey, Gullah Jack, and 33 others were subsequently executed. Their deaths, along with the execution of the other rebellion leaders, served as a warning to other enslaved people against attempting to rebel against their enslavers. As a result of the rebellion, White authorities suppressed the AME Church, and many of its members were arrested, tried, and executed. Although forced underground, the church continued to exist and played an essential role in the abolitionist movement and the struggle for civil rights in the following years. The Denmark-Vesey Revolt significantly impacted the abolitionist movement in the United States. 
The rebellion served as a rallying point for abolitionists who used it to raise awareness about the atrocities of slavery and the need to end the institution. The attempted rebellion clearly indicated the deep-seated desire for freedom among enslaved people, showing that enslaved people were willing to risk their lives to gain their freedom. The uprising and subsequent execution of Vesey and the other leaders served as a powerful symbol of resistance against slavery and white supremacy. The abolitionist movement in the North used the Denmark Vesey revolt as evidence of the brutal nature of slavery and the need for immediate abolition. The rebellion also led to increased vigilance by white authorities. It heightened the repression of enslaved people and free blacks, which further galvanized abolitionists to demand the immediate abolition of slavery. The rebellion also helped unite different factions of the abolitionist movement, as abolitionists from varying backgrounds came together to demand freedom for enslaved people and an end to slavery. It served as a call to action for abolitionists to work harder to end slavery, and it helped increase the momentum of the abolitionist movement. It played a significant role in the eventual abolition of slavery in the United States. The Denmark Vesey Slave Revolt of 1822 serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggle for freedom and equality for all people. Despite its failure, it heightened the determination and bravery of enslaved people to fight for their own freedom and the lengths to which the white community would go to maintain their power and control. I'm Professor Darius, and if you're still here, I hope you'll consider joining the history makers in our Patreon community who make this channel possible. As always, you're greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a history maker, you can join them for as little as a dollar a month and gain early access to ad-free videos. Or you can support us for free just by dropping a like, commenting, and subscribing. Either way, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the comments.